Are they real? Are they real? So all of this stuff is real. This stuff as well. Britain has a problem with fake makeup. Shoppers hunting for cheap designer cosmetics are putting themselves at risk. Social media pressure is fueling the growing appetite for big name products at small prices. But many of these items are fake and more worryingly could leave you with nasty side effects. The beauty industry has exploded and as millennials attempt to keep up with the latest trends and emulate their Instagram idols, many are taking shortcuts. Like our generation is very vain and like very about the image. So if you have something that's like Anastasia Beverly Hills or like Mac, regardless if it's fake or not, and if there's speculation, people are going to be like, well, I've got it, so it doesn't matter. Even if like, it could cause a reaction, they're still like, well, I've got this glow kit or that. People just want to use it because it's got the name on it. However, these unregulated knockoffs could contain dangerous ingredients. With no way of knowing what's truly in one of these products, is it worth the gamble, especially as you're putting it directly on your skin? Anjali Marto, a dermatologist from the British Skin Foundation, believes the risks are too high. Toxic ingredients in these kind of counterfeit products can lead to a large number of reactions, um, in particular things like skin rashes, allergies, chemical burns in more extreme circumstances. And some of the metals that have been found actually have the potential to cause problems with the nervous system and the brain long term as well. 17 year old YouTube blogger Maya was intrigued by fake makeup and at the request of her followers, tested out some products with terrifying consequences. After I used the fake makeup and took it off my face, my skin went absolutely mad. My acne went up in flares. I had spots everywhere. My lips had partial chemical burns on them as well. Bear in mind that the makeup was only on my face for five minutes after filming. It just did not go well. My skin did not react well at all. But despite Maya's experience, her friends still feel under pressure to keep up with the latest trends, no matter the cost. Quite a few of my friends do own pieces of fake makeup, especially the Kylie Jenner lip kits, knowing that they're fake, and when I kind of question them about it, they don't really think much of it, particularly because they don't know the dangers. I think that different platforms on social media like Instagram are part of the reason why people buy fake makeup, because when you buy a kind of nice looking expensive product, you naturally kind of want to show it off on Instagram and show all your friends. It makes you look like you have the real deal and like you have the same kind of items as the big influencers that you look up to. To see how easy it is to get our hands on potential fakes, we went to one of the UK's most popular markets. We were spoiled for choice. We found multiple stalls selling what we believe to be counterfeit Mac, Kylie Jenner and Benefit, all advertised as genuine and safe. I bought these for a fiver each. In the shop, they retail at triple the price. Too good to be true? I think so. These knockoffs may look similar, but their ingredients can paint a very different picture. To see what's hidden inside, we sent our fakes to be tested by doctors at Kingston University London, and the results were shocking. In the fake MAC lipstick, they found dangerously high levels of lead. Would you expect to find an ingredient like this in a makeup item? No, you wouldn't expect to find lead in lipstick. Uh, we analysed it and we found it to be significantly higher than, than the guideline for lead. It's a neurotoxin, so it can have various effects on things like uh, menstrual uh, difficulties, hormonal problems, things like that. So my advice would be uh, not to be putting it on the face and certainly not to be putting it on the lips. Other fake cosmetics have been found to contain mercury, cyanide, arsenic, paint stripper and even faeces. Angeli Marto is seeing a growing number of patients suffering reactions and thinks our change in shopping habits is to blame. I think fake makeup actually is causing a problem with increased reactions that we're seeing in our day-to-day -day clinic. I think in this digital marketing age where everything is literally just a click away, the way that we shop has changed so much. We don't go to supermarkets now, we don't look at the product, we don't hold the product, we don't try them out. And even if you did, sometimes the products are so, so similar to the original, you may not be able to tell them apart anyway. And Angelie's right. Wow. 
One search engine has come back with over 10,000 hits. This is scary. Fake, 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 definitely fake. And this poses new challenges for those trying to stop the spread of counterfeit goods. As the proportion of shopping that people do goes online, goes up, so will the proportion of counterfeit goods sold online. Here at Pipco, we've taken down 30,000 uh, counterfeit good websites in the last um, three to four years. We're making huge efforts. Uh, we take down over a thousand a month at the moment. Fake makeup is typically made in China before being shipped to the UK in sea containers or by post. Last year, 2.2 million counterfeit beauty products were seized in the UK alone. But experts believe this could be just the tip of the iceberg. The sheer scale of the problem is a huge frustration to the man who bought Benefit Cosmetics to the UK two decades ago. With the grey market and with counterfeit product, it's an amorphous mass made up of hundreds of little traders and people who are ignoring uh, uh, and in flagrant uh, ignorance when it comes to laws and, and, uh, and governance uh, and we can't control that all we can do is jump on it as soon as we are aware of the problems uh, as they arise in the various markets and we, we, we like to think we're doing everything possible but it is very very frustrating very frustrating advances in technology mean that counterfeits look almost identical even these beauty therapy students found it hard to spot the fake that one's a fake. It's the real one. Really? Yeah. You think this is a fake one? No, this is the fake one. Seriously? Yeah. So, as the fraudsters continue to innovate whilst evading capture, could the only real solution lie in education to put them out of business? Beauty therapy students at City and Islington College are taught about potential dangers of using fakes. We just advise them and tell them um, what can happen, show them pictures of what can happen. Um, we sometimes do like a tutorial or a lesson around that so that they're aware of what is out there. It's better to have less and have the real stuff than to um, obviously buy things that aren't, um, aren't going to be good for you to use. So how do you avoid unwittingly buying a fake? The number one point is if the price is too good to be true, it probably is. So look at the price point and look at the packaging. There may be subtle differences, typos or letters where they shouldn't be. Um, and then I think the third thing that you really need to think about as well is buying from reputable sources, you know, um, online outlets that you know are going to be selling you the original rather than fake products. While there are some still willing to take the risk in the name of beauty, Maya insists it's a gamble simply too toxic to take. After my experience testing out the makeup and playing with it in the video, I would not go near it again, never in a million years, because it does look nice and pretty on the outside, but you just don't know the damaging things that are on the inside that could actually really harm your skin like it did for me. So for just a few pounds less than the real deal, that is not bad for your skin, it's not worth it at all.